I take it that book really sparked a lot of discussion and controversy within your field. How is it viewed now? Well, uh, as a disclosure, I know Charles Murray, know him uh, for many years, have many private conversations with him. Uh, Hernstein passed away before the book was uh, published. Uh, that book reunited the controversy that Jensen began. And the controversy about that book is mostly a controversy about things that are not in the book, that most of the critics have not read the book. This is painfully obvious um, because the book does not say that uh, blacks are genetically inferior to whites. The book does not say that. The book, does, the book actually says when it comes to these differences in scores, I, I'm quoting almost exactly because I get this question all the time. We are agnostic as to whether genes or environment play the major role. We, we don't, not only are we, we, we don't know and we don't care because you don't treat people differently based on this in, information. The book is very carefully written. The book is, it's got something like 20 some odd chapters, I think, and only one chapter deals with group differences, predominantly black and white differences. And they're really just pointing out the, consequ the social consequences of having a lower IQ. It really documents what I alluded to before, that people with IQs under 85 really have a lot of problems, you know, navigating everyday life. Um, so, uh, but the book is controversial because it, it pointed out these differences. Uh, but to get to your question, that, that book was published in 1994. So here we are almost 30 years later, what does the data show? Data is, has not refuted anything in that book. If anything, Murray has gone on to publish more books uh, and people who are interested uh, can read his subsequent books and see, uh, he pretty much predicted a stratification of society along IQ lines. And in, at least in the United States, we see this. Uh, you know, the dividing line in, in American politics, many people have observed is education, with uh, more educated people going one way, less educated people going another way in general, you know, is, uh, you know, I'm not casting aspersions on, on, on anybody, but uh, IQ is an important factor in, in, in everyday life. And um, in 19, the book came out in 1994, 1996, I think it was, the American Psychological Association convened a task force to address the controversies. And they listed a bunch of knowns and unknowns in 1996 that pretty much agreed with, Mer with uh, Hernstein and, and Murray. The, uh, these, there are these differences in test scores. The origin of those differences is not understood. And um, uh, they didn't really uh, contradict anything in, in, in the book. And here we are so many years later uh, the more recent reviews basically are, are the same. We still don't understand exactly what causes those group differences. Uh, we suspect uh, genes might be involved in some complex way. When we say genes, it, it looks like they, there could be a thousand or more genes, each contributing a tiny amount to variation in, in uh, IQ. Uh, there, it gets very technical very fast. 